CCTV Camera World is proud to provide support for products purchased from our website. If you purchased your product from another vendor, please contact the vendor you purchased from for further assistance. In this video, I'm going to show you the image settings that are available on a Security Camera Inc. NVR system to adjust the color of your cameras and how sharp the image is or various scenes that your camera may be affected by. So the most rudimentary way to change the camera image settings or color settings is to click on the camera and then go to the menu that pops up when you click on the camera and click the color settings. What this is going to do is ask you to log in and then it's going to bring the camera into full screen. So this allows you to see the changes as you're making them. So for example, if I pump the brightness all the way up, the image is going to get really bright. If I pump the brightness all the way down, it's going to get fairly dark. And then if I bring it back to the default setting of 128, it's going to be back to the way it was. So uh, that's what brightness does. Hue is going to affect the colors. So if I lower it down, we get this pink tint. If I pump it all the way up, and we get more of a teal or a green tint in the sky. So then I want to default that to bring that back down to normal coloration. Contrast is going to be similar to brightness, and it's going to affect how bright the image is. So if I pump the contrast all the way up, my, my blacks and dark colors get really dark. And if I lower the contrast all the way down, my light colors get very light. Uh, so again, you want to keep that roughly in the middle uh, so that you're not getting too dark or too light. Again, this will vary on your camera's conditions and the, uh, what your camera is looking at. So you want to adjust these accordingly to get the perfect picture for your environment. Saturation is going to be similar to hue. It's going to affect how the colors look on the screen. If I pump the saturation up, everything looks a bit more green because of the bushes and stuff. If I put the saturation to zero, it's going to turn it into a grayscale image. Uh, so that's how saturated the colors are. So I'm going to go ahead and default that. And last but not least, we have sharpness. So sharpness is going to affect how sharp things look on the image. So when I turn sharpness all the way down, you'll notice that the jagged edges of these leaves start to get smoothed out a little bit more. Uh, the effects on the vehicles, uh, everything looks smoother. The, the reflections look smoother. Perhaps you're somebody who likes more smooth video or you're somebody who wants to pump the sharpness up and see more of those edges. Although if you pump the sharpness all the way up, it does look a little bit too jagged or unrealistic. So you will want to make sure you put your sharpness back down to a reasonable level. And then last but not least, after you've made those changes to your camera's image, you're going to want to save them. And it says nothing changed, which is fine. Or you can select your other channels, right? So make sure you save your changes to channel one, and then you can go to the various channels that you have connected or cameras that you have connected to your system. So I'm going to go ahead and cancel out of this menu, go back to a four camera grid view. And then there are some advanced image settings that are available for cameras, depending on what the camera itself actually supports. And to get to those settings, I need to go down here to the menu, go to this menu option at the left hand side, click the setup button. It's going to bring up the main menu. And in here we see there is an image control option underneath the channel or camera section of the main menu. So again, you're going to want to go to image control under the channel section of the main menu. Once you've clicked that, here we see there are the six cameras that are connected to my NVR. Now channel six, the reason why this is grayed out is because this is a third party camera. It's a third party PTZ that I have connected to the NVR over my network. So the NVR is only able to adjust its basic rudimentary image settings, the image settings that I just got done showing you. It can change the, the, the brightness, hue, saturation, sharpness. It can change all of those settings, but it can't change any of these advanced image settings that we're going to dive into. So again, I'm going to pick on channel one here, camera one, and click the setup icon. It's going to bring me into these advanced settings. So the IR cut mode and IR cut delay have to do with the IR LED. So GPIO auto just means that it's using the light sensor on the front of the camera to determine if it's day or night mode. So of course you can come in here to the IR cut mode and if you want the camera to stay in color mode you would select color mode. If you want it to stay in black and white mode then you would select black and white mode. If you set it to image mode it will basically try and guess what you want it set to based on the image that it's seeing. And then last but not least you can set it to schedule mode so that you can actually set the time that you want the IR to turn on and you want the camera to go to black and white mode. So this would be 6 p.m. and then it's having it end the black and white mode and turn its IRs off at 6 a.m. 
Really, you're just gonna wanna leave it set to the GPIO auto mode, which again is using the light sensor on the front of the camera to determine if there is enough light to stay in color mode or turn into black and white mode if there isn't enough light. Uh, otherwise, you can customize it if needed usually color mode or black and white mode, depending on what you want the camera to do. The IR cut delay is actually how long it takes for the IR cut filter to change the image. In other words, change it from color to black and white mode or vice versa. Typically this IR cut delay is really only gonna be affected uh, by this auto mode. Uh, so when the light sensor determines there's not enough light, uh, there's a delay before it actually switches the mode and vice versa. So next is the IR LED mode. So this is actually telling you how much IR you want going out. So a manual would allow you to choose how much IR that you want going out. Auto would be smart IR. In other words, the camera gauges how close and, or how much reflection it might be getting from IR and it will reduce the IR if you know the object is close or there's walls nearby or it's noticing a lot of IR glare, then it will lower that. If the object or the camera is viewing far away, it will increase its IR intensity to try and compensate for the lack of light to see that object far away. And then the on mode, that's gonna be always on 100% IR mode. Um, and then last but not least is off. If you don't want your camera glowing IRs at all, then you would turn the IRs off. I'm gonna set mine back to manual and then have the low beam light set to 100 intensity. Lens flip allows you to flip the image up and down. Angle flip will flip it horizontally. So again, lens flip is flipping vertically. Angle flip is flipping horizontally. This can be useful if you have your camera mounted in different ways. What corridor mode is gonna do is actually rotate the image rather than flipping it. So now it's into a uh, horizontal orientation rather than a vertical orientation. So you flip that to get it back into the regular orientation. The angle trad is another way of flipping the image. Exposure compensation, now this is your wide dynamic range, your headlight compensation, or your backlight compensation. What this will allow the camera to do is adjust its image based on the amount of light that's coming into it. For example, WDR, if I enable that, what that is gonna do is attempt to even out the lighting levels in the background with the foreground to even out the lighting between the image. So if I increase the WDR level, what it's gonna do is make it brighter if I reduce the WDR level, what it's gonna do is, is reduce the amount of WDR that it's attempting to do. So it's, a, it's reducing the amount of correction that WDR or wide dynamic range is applying to the image. So if I set it roughly in the middle here, it's made the brightness of the sun even throughout my image. So the brightness in this bush is roughly the same as the brightness across the street. So next is HLC or headlight compensation. What this is going to do is attempt to compensate if there's any headlights in the image. So this is really hard to play around in, with and show an example of in daytime because the headlights aren't shining into the camera, but imagine they are. So if you pump up headlight compensation all the way to the max, it's gonna make the image look really dim because it's expecting headlights to be shining into the camera to not glare the surrounding image from the headlights. So if you lower headlight compensation, it's gonna make your overall image brighter because it's expecting the headlights to not be as bright. Last but not least is backlight or compensation or BLC. It works similarly to headlight compensation except it's trying to uh, compensate for glare from an external light source. Let's say that street lamp across the street is on and then it's affecting a glare, you know, the glare is coming out and affecting my image heavily, then I would, of course, set the BLC area to top and then I would adjust the BLC level to make sure that that street lamp isn't causing any issues with my camera at nighttime. So those are the different image compensation technologies that are provided by this camera and, and accessible via the NVR. I'm just gonna go ahead and set it back to disabled because I had a decent enough image without those compensations. 
Next would be 3D noise reduction. So this is really uh, affects the camera image at nighttime, specifically in black and white mode. So you would notice that if you turned 3D noise reduction off, you would get a lot of pixelation, a lot of visual noise, it's called, at nighttime. So you typically want to just leave this set to auto. Uh, typically, the camera algorithms are good enough at reducing the noise. White balance, this is going to adjust how much the color affects your image, and you can adjust it as you see fit. For example, if with this manual setting here, the image looks sort of like cotton candy. Um, so typically, you're going to want to leave white balance alone unless you know what you're doing and you know how to finely tune your image. The shutter rate, that's going to affect how much light is going into the image. And that's how the time exposure allows you to adjust the shutter rate. And you can go all the way from as low as 5 all the way up to a 20,000 1 over shutter rate. So the shutter rate, again, is going to affect how much light. So if I lower the shutter rate, it means there's going to be a ton of light. If I increase the shutter rate, then it's going to make the image darker. So typically, again, unless you know what you're doing, you're going to want to set the shutter rate to auto. And, and the camera is going to adjust its image accordingly. The defog mode, if your camera supports defog, will attempt to reduce fog in front of the image. And then last but not least, you do have a neat little default button here at the bottom in case you make any egregious mistakes and want to head back to ground zero. So you click default to go back to the default settings. Hopefully this video gave you a good overview of the image settings. We started with the basic brightness, hue, saturation, sharpness settings, and then we transition into the more advanced settings like the window I'm in now. Thank you for watching. If you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.